Mike McDaniel met with the media at the Combine about an hour ago. So we're going to talk about some of the things he had to say. And he said some interesting things. What is up, Finn fans? Two for a day. I'll get you two videos today. I don't know if this one's going to go on the podcast, just because I'm getting it out to you quick. Uh, but again, if you don't know, I've been uploading to the podcast, so the last two videos have been made into podcasts on Spotify. Link is in the description. So if you want to start listening to to me talking while you're doing other things and not have to be stuck on YouTube, you can go check that out on Spotify. But be sure to come and just like this, like the video, and then go listen to it. Yeah, it helps helps the algorithm out. Um, but yeah, Mike McDaniel met with the media. <clears throat> I have two sources, David for. I don't want to butcher these people's names, but I'm going to butcher these people's names. David Ferron, Ferrones and Daniel uh, Aufusi. Aou, butchered their names. I got two sources, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> kind of mash together both of their, uh, what they had to say. But we're jumping to this. Mike McDaniel on what two's concussion will play in the decision to exercise fifth year option. You factor everything as best as you can. Mike Daniel's something that the team was still working on May 1st deadline. He also talked about the fact that they're not going to rush to make a decision. They have all of March pretty much. So they're going to take their time and decide to see, you know, are they going to pick up the fifth year option for Tua? Um, you guys know how I feel about that. You can go back and check out that video. Um, it's an interesting subject. I talked about it earlier today. I made a video about it. It's it's all over the place. Some people think just give him contract extension. Some people think give him the fifth year option. Some people think uh, don't and let him play it out. And if he deserves it, then you give him an extension. And if he doesn't, then you move on from him. A lot of different things uh, have come from that. And we'll see how that plays out. Um, on Byron Jones' tweet, he says, I think our Dolphin organization... Entire training staff and medical department have supported him at every turn, and I think we'll continue to do uh, uh, do that as he presses forward. Um, McDaniel said he personally did not hear any concerns from Jones about his rehab process, but understands how frustrating it is for him as a competitor. I'm not going to delve too much on that and get and any speculations and stuff. You know, Byron gave his opinions. Mike McDaniel gave his. I'm going to leave it alone because, um, again, like he said. Byron Jones is probably frustrated. Um, I'm assuming, you know, there's, we were frustrated as fans. We wanted to see him out there. Definitely going to help the team. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, Mike McDaniels on the backup quarterback options. He said, Skyler did some things uh, to get a chance to compete, to be a quarterback too, but the team is interested in bringing competition to make the quarterback room better. What that means is what that means, Right a competition for backup, right? Is there a competition between Skyler and who they bring in? Is there a competition in general to make the quarterback room better? Is there an option where they bring in somebody again, it's not going to happen, uh, but like bring in a, D- a Derek Carr and have a full blown competition. I doubt it. I think he's more talking about the backup uh, situation, but he did say he's interested in bringing in competition to make the quarterback room better. So we'll see how that pans out when it comes to free agency. McDaniel said it never crossed his mind to dismiss special teams coach Danny Crossman, which I found to be very interesting. Now, the special teams wasn't great last year, just like the defense wasn't great last year. And we moved on, and both of those guys were were crossovers from Brian Flores. I find it very interesting that it never crossed his mind. Let me see if David has anything... Uh, when it comes to Cross's mind to possibly move on for Danny Cross, especially. he does add he wants to see better results, uh, but feels he can get there with Crossman. We'll see. We'll see how that all pans out. This one I found interesting about the offensive line coach, uh, Matt Applebaum. So he says um, on dismissing offensive line coach Matt Applebaum, Mike McDaniel says it was about getting Frank Smith, who helped a lot with the coaching uh, the the lineman to take more coordinator duties hat duties. Smith was devoted a little too much to the offensive line, so it seemed like. And again, my biggest thing that I liked when they brought in Applebaum and when they brought in Frank Smith 
was that these guys were offensive line coach and, you know, they should really be able to <clears throat> elevate our offensive line. Didn't really work that. The, uh, well, it worked. We went from 32nd to 22nd, but still it wasn't where it should have been. Um, and it seems like the reason why they moved on from Applebaum was probably he wasn't ready to be an NFL coach. He went from college to NFL. It seemed like he wasn't ready to be an NFL coach. And it seemed like Frank Smith was helping him a little too much. And Mike McDaniel wanted him to focus more on the offensive coordinator duties, ha- duties than to help somebody who's not experienced. So that's why they brought in um, who they brought in. I find that very interesting. Maybe the offensive line will take a big jump. It doesn't need to be top 10 in my opinion. It just needs to be better. I want a run game. Like, come on. I asked about pending free agent Jordan Poyer potentially coming to Miami. Mike McDaniel says, I'm not in the bin, in the business of tampering. We need every draft pick. A little bit of a, a little dig. He wasn't here for that whole Tom Brady situation. So it was a little bit of a, a little jab at probably Chris Greer and Stephen Ross for being dumb. Um, But yeah, Jordan, I would love to have Jordan Poyer here. He, he You guys got to understand that the type of defense we're going to be running with Vic Fangio, we need the same. We've had that situation with Brandon Jones, <clears throat> Javon Holland, then you got the vet and Eric Rowe. It's going to be that same situation, so I'd love it. And obviously, I don't think Jordan Poyer is going to be demanding a huge chunk of change, especially because he already said he'd like to go somewhere where they didn't take half his money. Well, Florida, they won't take half your money. Um, Mike McDaniel on Vic Fangio, he says, I think having an opportunity to add Vic Fangio is an exciting uh, of an opportunity in the offseason I could have. I think all players on defense will benefit from it. And I know myself included all benefit uh, from the process of being able to work with him. 100%. I'm, I want to, if I could find the video, I want to play uh, what um, Teddy Bruschi said about adding Vic Fangio. It's really going to help out uh, Jalen Phillips and it's going to help out you know a lot of the guys on defense. And it's going to, like he said, it's going to help him out as well, Mike McDaniel. Because he's, he's had the experience as it. That's the thing. I'm always down. And if you guys remember when we were looking for a head coach, I was always wanting one that was already a head coach, right? Um, Harbar, when he went to the Super Bowl, I wanted um, Peterson, who's doing well with the Jacksonville. I want those guys who have done it. Regardless if they're fired, they'll learn from their mistakes. So I think Vic Fangio is going to learn from his mistake and help Mike McDaniel. Uh, Mike McDaniel and Channing Tindall, which we're all very interested in seeing. I'm expecting a big offseason and a big jump. I think it's a matter of him really being able to visualize and really carry out all assignments with the defensive structure. And again, I think that's where Fangio will come in and help him. Again, we got to remember he was a third round pick. If he was a first or second round pick, then I'm like, all right, well, what's going on with Channing Tindall? Same thing with Eric Izukoma. He, uh, comma. Eric Izukama, he was a fourth round pick. So a lot of people, want, where's our draft picks? Where's our draft picks? We didn't have a first and second round draft pick. So I'm, I'm interested to see his development. He talks about Emmanuel Ogba. He says he's been recovering soundly from his torn uh, tricep. Um, he should be ready to go for OTAs. I, was like, oh, I heard that about somebody else and he wasn't. Mike McDaniel said he wouldn't close the door on the return of Mike Gazicki, but echoes Chris Greer's comments saying Gazicki has earned the right to be a free agent. He's earned the right to be a free agent. Again, essentially meaning the man's going to go sign somewhere because the Dolphins are probably not going to match um, that whole situation. Um, and now I'm looking at David uh, for, for, for owns. So sorry, I butchered your name. He talks about Vic. Um, he has a quote here from Mike McDaniel saying, Vic is one on one, in my opinion, at creating innovating, sustainable, high quality defense. And he had the year off to to do even more of that. <laughs> like, it's going to be amazing. Mike McDaniel also talks about his clock management, which wasn't great last year. There's clearly some situations I wish he could have back. He said it's something he will consistently strive to get better at among many things. And I also think that Vic Fangio can help him in that aspect, whereas he can t- teach him to be quicker with his decisions and stuff like that. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about with this is Mike McDaniel clarifies that Tua is actually practicing jujitsu this offseason, not judo. Apparently, there was confusion between martial arts that contain J's and U's, is what David said. David's funny. Um, 
hey, if it helps you fall properly, if it helps you um, not get concussed, if it helps you, if a, a pass rusher is coming at you and you just <laughs> you just flip them over, <laughs> I'm fine with that, man. It doesn't hurt to get into better shape because doing jujitsu is going to put him in great shape, but also help him um, elongate his career. I'm fine with that. I don't see any harm in that. Here is the quote. I'm not going to show it because it's ESPN and, and I'll probably get copyright claimed. Um, Dolphins Talk posted this, but we're going to listen to it. It's about four minutes. Um, they talk about the addition of Vic Fangio to the um, team. The NFL is a better league when that man's a defensive coordinator for a defense. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah. Beautiful schemes. If I am Chubb or Jalen Phillips, I am ecstatic because this man only creates edge rushers that are defensive player of the year candidates. Okay, you're talking Devon Millers, Khalil Max, mm -hmm. those type of guys. Utilizes a three-four base front, split safety looks with a lot of disguises and movement. Very brilliant offensive mind. And this is what I love about it, fellas. You got the young hip. Mike McDaniel wearing the Gucci shades or whatever he'd be wearing $20,000 watches and you got old school Vic Fangio mm -hmm. coming to South Beach and I absolutely love it. It's the yin to the yang. Like I said, bringing in Vic Fangio, Mike McDaniel realizes where he lacks and where the team needs help. It's on the defensive side. So what does he do? He goes out and gets the best defensive coordinator. Man, this is huge. And when I say huge, I mean huge for the Miami Dolphins. And Teddy, you are, you just alluded to it. You, you got this big, beautiful mind in Mike McDaniel. They're po they popped up a graphic that said, uh, Vic Fangio, defensive coordinator, 36 seasons of NFL coaching experience, led top 10 scoring defenses in eight of his last 11 stints, 2018 AP NFL assistant coach of the year. Great schema of offense on that side, and now you compliment him with a defensive savant in Vic Fangio. I mean, all he does is crank out top ten defenses in the National Football League. So, you know, like Teddy talked about, you know, all those guys on the defensive side of the football should be ecstatic at Vic Fangio becoming the defensive coordinator, and he's going to put a lot of those guys in positions to be very successful next year. I just. I don't want to get ahead of myself, and I don't want to get too excited because you guys know my motto: I'd rather be surprised than let down. But it's I'm I, Jalen Phillips consistently gets better, right? His sack t number kind of dropped a little bit. He went from eight and a half, I think he got seven this year. But everything else, his pressures, his hurries, his knockdowns, all his win rate had went up. Top ten, top ten, top ten numbers. I can't wait to see what Vic Fangio is going to do. Can Vic Fangio be that situation where he's going to consistently have him getting, you know, the Von Miller-esque, have him consistently going after the quarterback? I am very excited to see what he what he's going to do. But guys, comment below. Let me know what you guys think of everything that was talked about today from Mike McDaniel to what Teddy Bruschi had to say about Vic Fangio. Comment below, and I will see you guys in the next video. But like usual, stay classy and fence up.